How to make a coal-fired steam engine boiler plant, part 28, finishing the boiler. The boiler is now back in the workshop after a very successful steam test yesterday. I steamed the boiler for approximately 2 hours at full working pressure. And a full working pressure of 80 psi means that the steam and the water get quite a lot hotter than 100 degrees centigrade. And this has caused further shrinkage of the mahogany cladding around the boiler. After the first steaming, the one where I didn't raise the temperature very high, gaps appeared in the cladding and I filled one of the gaps using a piece of mahogany. But after yesterday, there was a lot more shrinkage of the cladding around the boiler. So I removed the piece of mahogany that I put in last week and now I'm getting a full-size piece of mahogany strip in the gap that's opened up. In case you're curious as to what I'm doing at the moment, obviously I'm sanding the mahogany, but what I'm doing is filling a gap. I applied a small amount of cyanoacrylate adhesive to the gap and as I sand the mahogany now, the small particles of wood created by the sandpaper fill the gap. When I ran my thumb over the piece of mahogany that I'd just fitted, I could feel it, so I decided to sand it down some more and apply some more varnish. And I think this should be okay now, it's never going to be perfect. And look, round the other side of the boiler is another gap, and this is a big one. And that's mainly due to the fact that I removed the piece of cladding entirely because it was too small for the gap. I cut a new piece of mahogany strip to the correct size on my bandsaw, and now I'm fitting this in place. As you can see, it's slightly larger. It's better doing it this way rather than putting a very thin piece of mahogany down the side of the original piece. The hammer looks like a very severe solution, but I'm just using it to tap the piece in place. I'm not putting any pressure on it at all. The process is identical to the one that I've just described, so I'll speed the video up. This piece of mahogany is out of my general stock of mahogany that I've had for a long time, and as you can see, it's a slightly different colour, it's a good bit darker. But, I'm not too worried about this, because most of the other mahogany strips over time will darken. Plus, if it really bothers me, it's very easy to just flip it out and put another piece in. But matching the colour is always going to be a problem, because mahogany, of course, is a natural product. In the loneliness of a cold winter's night, when I've got nothing better to do, I may change this for another piece of mahogany. During the steam test, I noticed a slight leak on the union to the pressure gauge. If you watch the video again at the beginning, you'll see it. I tightened it up slightly, and it disappeared as the test progressed. And so this doesn't happen again, I spread a very tiny amount of Loctite 542 on the concave part of the union, on the pressure gauge itself. And I applied this using a very small screwdriver point, I didn't flood it with 542. A useful tip for fitting pressure gauges, always use a spanner on the square part before you tighten the nut. And this allows you to tighten the union nut thoroughly, without damaging the pressure gauge. The next thing to do is to remove this pipe. This connects the steam tap, which is the boiler steam output, to the inlet of the superheater or steam dryer. And what I'm going to do is use some string to lag this to thermally insulate it. And if you want to know how to do this in detail, I've already done a video ages and ages ago of how to do it in great detail. And if you'd like to watch this video, just search my channel for pipe lagging for model steam engines and boilers. While this white paint was drying, I fitted a small piece of pipe to the water gauge blowdown valve. While I was making this pipe, I kept seeing the string coated pipe on the bench. And it's very reminiscent of one of my early girlfriends from when I was much younger than today. The more I saw of it, the less I liked it. Once the paint had dried, I removed the string from the pipe and polished it up on the polishing spindle, and it looks much better. It doesn't need any thermal insulation at this point because the wet steam comes from the tap and goes straight into the superheater. For this next part of the job, I had to remove the boiler from the base, and I thought I would have a quick look in the firebox. And it looks really nice now. It's not a virgin boiler anymore, it's done some work. Sit back and relax. Why not take your medication now? Because it's painting time.
I'll just stop the music there. I know this is not painting, this is preparation for the painting. And now it's back to the painting. So once the paint had dried, I reassembled the boiler, and here it is. This is a really nice little boiler. I think I'm going to use this in the Stuart Victoria plant. I'm not really a collector. What I do with model steam engines is I play with them. And then after I've played with them for a while, I usually get fed up and sell them. Well, that's not strictly true. I only really sell the things that I make and rebuild to finance another project. I was hoping that the donations and the patrons would help finance these videos, but that's not working out very well at all now. It was great at first, but it's dwindled down to nothing now. Of the average of 20,000 views that my videos get per day, I have 71 patrons, and I'm really grateful for this. Don't get me wrong, I'm not being greedy and I'm not being facetious. I thank you very much for this. And I also thank anyone who sent me a PayPal donation although these seem to have disappeared entirely at the moment, not to worry. Although any financial support is gratefully received, income was not the motivation for me doing these videos. The reason I make them is just to put something back. I've been doing this sort of thing for many, many years, most of my life in fact, and I enjoy sharing my experience with beginners to this fascinating hobby. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and as always, I hope you found it useful.